All right, Justin, let's talk about Leonard Williams. He's six foot five, three hundred two pounds, twenty six years old. Two thousand fifteen draft. He was drafted six overall. Wow, he's drafted really high. In twenty nineteen, where he was traded to the New York Giants, he had a total of forty six tackles, two tackles for a loss, and a half a sack. Bad numbers. Bad numbers. His contract right now is one year sixteen million dollars because he's playing on the franchise tag. Justin, I'm gonna let you lead the way a little bit on this one, but what do you got on the cat? Bobby, fun fact about Leonard Williams, because we have a lot to talk about, and I'm saying this very quick. Uh, If you're a longtime Talking Giants listener, you know that Leonard Williams lives a magnificent life in California. Done. He lives a great life. He does a lot of fun things, uh, nature things, uh, on jet skis. Um, Fun. Fun life. Let's let's go visit him next offseason when he signs his extension. Ha ha. Um, Bobby, this is the second player that I'm most looking forward to talking about during this PPP and during the summer. Sterling Shepard's number one. Everybody knows I'm on a big Sterling she- Sterling Shepard revenge tour and telling him that he's that he's great and he's the number one wide receiver and why he's so important. Oh, but oh boy, Leonard Williams is my number two player. Leonard Williams is my number two player where I'm gonna go on a to- I'm gonna go on a tirade and tell you how good of a football player he is. But let's just say it, Bobby. Trade is bad. Franchise tag and contract situation, very bad. But what can we do about that? Nothing. The trade, I don't. We've done that too many times. I'm no, not no, that's it. it. But, but I want to preface it. I want to but just here's say, why, we, here's why the franchise tax sucks. Is because the trade could have been not salvaged, but made it look look a little better if they got him on a decent extension. But he just because he had a down year. It was his worst statistical year. So it would have been the best time to get him on extension. We know what type of player he is. We know what type of numbers he can put up. You know, it's not like he like you know the whole he got a half a sack. I mean, his sacks, his sacks, three, seven, where he was an all-pro that year, two, five, tackles for a loss, 11, three, 11, seven. It was his worst year, and his worst year by far. So now, he gets the opportunity to, one, take up $16 million of cap and have an awesome year and raise his, like, contract extension number, where he didn't really have the really the, the only bargaining trip chip he had to get that franchise tag. It was like, hey, you know you can't lose me. Like you, correct. If you lose me, you're screwed, Dave Kettleman. Yeah, I wanted to just say because we're going to have an episode where we're going to say that Leonard Williams is a good player and he's a much better football player than he's getting credit for. So hey, Bobby, if you if you're if you're a fan of patterns and if you're a fan of random things, uh, his rookie year he had three sacks, then he had a really good year with seven sacks. Is and then the year after he had two sacks, not good, and then five sacks is okay. So he had a down year with a half a sack. So now this year he's at least going to have five sacks. If you believe in random patterns like that. But let's actually get to real data and let's actually get to not random things. So let's talk about the rush game really quick. You can't say those are random, but go ahead. Well, well, what do you mean? The, it's, about... it's a every every other year he has a good sack year. I think that's kind of random. Uh, they're but they're not like the best guys aren't don't get random sack years. They constantly put up sacks. Like you're, Aaron Donald's never gonna have a year where he puts up one and a half sacks. All right. Well, if you believe that, all right. Well, anyway, you, I, you, I took a. I just hate you, the idea that you like. Oh, that's that's totally random. It's not. But random. also, you, you clearly heard in my voice that I was saying a joke, and then you took it seriously. So now I'm really right. mad at you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk for ten minutes. All right. So let's talk about the rush game. Before the Leonard Williams trade, and our friend uh, Anthony Tomato, uh, he was the guy that pulled this up, and he got a, in his this this tweet did really well for him. Uh, Four point two yards per attempt before the Leonard Williams trade in terms of uh, rushing defense. One hundred twenty seven yards per game allowed rushing yards, and two thousand forty six yards annualized total yards after the trade. 3.4 yards per attempt versus 4.2, 94 yards per game, and fifteen hundred yards annualized. So. He helped the overall presence of this rush defense. Of course, he didn't do it you know, totally and solely. It wasn't just him, but he helped that presence. Um, let's now talk about some pass rushing numbers, and let's talk about some his ability to create pressure. Because, of course, he is not getting sacks, but he does a very, very good job at creating pressure. Quarterback hits among interior defensive linemen, pro football New York Giants uh, at the account. They tweeted this out the other day. QB hits among interior defense alignments since 2015. Aaron Donald, 93. Pretty darn good. One of the best players in the National Football League. Well, Leonard Williams is just behind him with a, a, a just behind him by 11 quarterback hits with 82. And then Fletcher Cox, third place, 64. Huge gap. Huge difference there. 
and quarterback hits, I am of the belief, and I will continue to tell you how Leonard Williams had a pretty good statistical season, especially with his eight games with the Giants. Good statistical season about creating pressure, how creating pressure is going to be, it's more reliable, and it's if you create pressure in more ways just besides sacks, it is going to be more of a predictive way to measure sacks for hopefully the following year. So let's go into some other stuff. Let's compare him to Yannick Ngakwe because everybody liked doing that. Everybody wanted Yannick Ngakwe. Everybody and their mother loved how he was posting Lawrence Taylor pictures earlier this offseason. So let's compare Leonard Williams on a 16-game pace versus um, Yannick Ngakwe in 2019. Leonard Williams had 12 QB hurries. Ngakwe had 10. 20 QB knockdowns for Leonard Williams. Ngakwe had 9. 34 QB pressures on a 16-game rate. And Gakwe had 27 in 16 games, 22 QB hits on a 16 game rate with the Giants and Gakwe had 15 and Leonard Williams, 52 total tackles when Ngakwe had 41, every single one of those categories besides sacks and sacks are important. I will never deny that sacks are extremely important. They're extremely valuable, but in every single one of those categories, Leonard Williams was better on a 16 game rate with the Giants compared to Yannick Ngakwe. And everybody loved Yannick Ngakwe. Yeah. It's just for me, I I like that stuff. And I think, like, Larry Williams is a good player. Like, I, and he, like, it seemed like he unlocked Dalvin Tomlinson in a way we've never seen Dalvin Tomlinson. Um, and I get that. So I get, like, you can't just look at the basic stat line. But at the end of the day, QB hits and hurries, they're not real stats. You know what I'm saying? They're indicators. They're not stats. Oh, yes, they and are. I, I, well, a hurry's not a stat. What's a hurry? Well, you said QB hits isn't a stat. QB, if you're hurrying the quarterback to throw the ball and hitting the quarterback when they're attempting to throw the ball, that could be the difference between a completed pass and an incompletion. It could be the difference between a tipped ball, a bad throw, and an interception. So it don't. I don't want to hear that it's not. It's, it's not it's a not real a stat. stat. You're though. impacting the game. You're impacting the game. Okay, but you, I mean, he had a QB hit against Aaron Rodgers, and it was a 45 yard. All right. Well, that's one. You're nitpicking one. But what I'm saying is it's a stat. Like, you know, when you tackle someone, it's it is like, a stat. Okay, you you're stop sa- you're someone, saying it's not a stat. You stop someone there. All right, well, a it's, tackle also, when you make a tackle 17 yards down the field, that's also a stat, and that's bullshit as well. Yeah, but it's it's a, it's a stat of this is where the play stopped because he, the, someone tackled it. So it's, it's an indicator more than it is a stat. I disagree. You're impacting the game. Never said that. I, like I said, it's an indicator. It's not... QB hit like you don't you can't you can't really go to your contract and be like look I got QB hits well it's like well you had a half a sack I disagree I think that's a huge part because it's better indicators of how you're going to create pressure Indi- the next it's year an indicator, a guy but- a guy can get 10 sacks you can be like Kyler Fackrell and get 10 sacks and then 15 QB hits and then surprise surprise if you're going to get the same amount of opportunities the next year your sack rate may be lower and that's not a surprise because you only hit the quarterback 15 times. Like I said, it's an indicator, not a stat. <laughs> Anyways, let's move on. Leonard Williams, good player. Like I said, him, Dexter Lawrence, and Dalvin Thompson is a deadly trio at the interior defensive line. Uh, I, I mean, I don't know any other team that has that. Now, I, I, there probably is, and I'm ignorant to it. But it's a, it's a deadly trio at that defensive line. It allows for Blake Martinez – the inside linebackers, it allows them to do stuff. And like you said, that stat of the running game, like it's not all on Leonard Williams, but I think a big part of it was on Leonard Williams. It gave Dalvin Tomlinson more one-on-one options. So Leonard Williams is a really good player. Um, he's worth a long contract, obviously not at $16 million, but he's a good player. Um, he's had years where he's gotten sacks. He's had an all-pro year. So like you're saying, he's a he's a good player. He's not an awesome player, but he's a good player. Um and I wish we could have got him extended. And, you know, I don't want to go into the whole trade talk. I just wish we could have got him extended, even if it was for a little more than people would have wanted. You know, the number we said going in the free agency was around 12. If it would have been 13 or whatever, I I don't know. Uh, corona has a- affected it a little bit about cap going forward, but it just sucks that they couldn't get something done this offseason because, you know, it would have been cool to get a contract off of his down year where it's like, like we, I don't think. I mean, no one can expect his year to be as bad as it was in 2019, like stat wise. Yeah, yeah. Watch, watch us, or well, watch me in particular, just be totally wrong on it. But uh, hey, it's a bad situation. We all know that it's bad. 
He's a good football player. Um, I think even the one final thing that I forgot to mention is just about his double team rate, but also his win rate is also slightly uh, uh, below average, I want to say, but his double team rate is also slightly above average in terms of how often he is being double teamed. So he's commanding up space, which you're hoping is going to allow more open space for guys like Dalvin, for guys like Dexter and our edge rushers, whoever's playing next to him as well. Bobby, uh, we even sometimes for even forget to mention this. We could see some plays and a decent amount of chunk of plays this year where Patrick Graham, uh, he could be using four down linemen, where he could be using maybe B.J. Hill and and uh, uh, Leonard Williams out there as two defensive ends, and then you have Dalvin Tomlinson and Dexter Lawrence as your two down, you know, two defensive tackles. We could see that. We could see a lot of looks where you have three down linemen and you're only using one edge rusher, um, which means that you're going to have maybe Leonard Williams lining up with his hand in the ground right next to a left tackle or a right tackle on some situation. So, you know, he's not just going to be solely rushing the passer and trying to be productive from an A gap or a B gap. Maybe he's sometimes he's lining out there on the edge, but he's just putting his hand in the ground, which if we're talking about uh, putting him in the best position to try and you know, get his numbers up, I think that's it. Because it's tougher to rush the passer, I feel like. It's tougher to really get sacks, I feel, um, and generate pressure through that way compared to... It's tougher to generate from that interior part of that offensive line and that defensive line. That's my right. point, compared to lining up on the edge. Right. So it's going to be a big year for him. Um, we need him to produce, but part of, like, the, the devil in that is that, like, well, he produces, he gets some huge contracts, so... But at yeah. the end of the day, we want to see the Giants football players play good. You figure the contract stuff out later. If we give a, go, a, a big contract to a good player, we can't complain about that. Anything else on Leonard Williams before we roll? No. Uh, root for him. Root for Leonard Williams. I know it's tough for, for a lot of people. I know a lot of people are just very biased with the trade. Um, root for Leonard Williams because Leonard Williams does make the New York football Giants a lot better of a football team. So go Leonard Williams. We'll see you in California next offseason. Sounds good. Yeah, seriously, Leonard Williams, invite us out there, man. I, we've been you, you, you were the highlight of our segment Giant Stories in the off season. All right, Justin, that's the show. We'll be back tomorrow with another player profile and projection. Uh, getting a lot of DMs of people binge listening to these. Love, love to hear that, and our download numbers show it. Where it's like, oh, we put this episode out, and we have this many downloads. So, it's been cool. The numbers been growing. Reviews been growing. Appreciate you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Until then, let's go big. Blue.